Hola, welcome to my channel Clear Vision. My name is Simon and all the videos you'll find here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. Hopefully there's something here of interest for you in terms of uh, navigating your way through various issues that may occur in your life. As always, please like and subscribe and leave any comments, uh, feedback or suggestions or if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing from you. This week's video is for anybody out there who has been in a relationship and then has had a whole load of downtime and all of that, all, and doing the whole, um, you know, I'm gonna be by myself. So this video is about preparing your, is about how to effectively be by yourself and how to prepare yourself for a new relationship because often when we enter into a new relationship, we find it's the same old shit happening again or we're triggered all over again when we thought we'd managed to heal ourselves from previous hurts, betrayals, etc, etc. This video is also could be of use for those of you who find yourselves in the middle of a relationship which is having, say, a, a rough patch where both of you are re-evaluating the relationship yourselves, maybe looking at yourselves, maybe having some separate time, um, trying to work out who you both are and what you want from life and then move the relationship forward in some uh, more healthier um, shape and form. There was this, it was popularized I think by Osho, I think that's how you pronounce his name, um, the guru guy, and he was a bit of a trickster but I'm not getting it, I don't want to get into whether or not he was a trickster, but he did say something that being by yourself is the key to being in a relationship with somebody else and learning to love somebody else because you take away the ego. Um, he said it was, he referred to it as paradoxical in its nature, but that it does work. I think there's an element of truth in what he says with this, but I don't think it's the full story. And it, it seems to have manifested itself through popular usage into this kind of, the best way to be in a relationship is to be by yourself. That's how you learn. Well, it's not as easy as that. And there are a few steps that you can take, which I'm gonna try and explain in this video. So as I said, within this video, it's, it's for those of you who have been in a relationship had a hard time with it, come out of that relationship, having some downtime and then preparing yourself for a new relationship or finding yourself in a new relationship and you're triggered all over again and you don't understand why because you've already done the work. So you don't get what's going on. So this is for you guys. Most of us enter into some kind of relationship when we're into some kind of serious, semi-serious relationship when we're in our 20s and we, we we move in together um, and we, the thing is a lot of us bring a whole load of baggage with us. Left over from childhood, left over from teenage experiences, left over from a pre previous flings, whatever. We get into this serious relationship. So we've brought with us preconceived ideas, past traumas, past projections, projections that we have, shadow projections, all of these things. We bring them into the relationship and chances are the other person brings them in too. Now, this is where Either the couple manage to support each other through their personal development and growth and evolution and manage to maintain the relationship and they have this lifelong relationship and it flourishes and, and, and blossoms into something beautiful. Other people end up functional in their dysfunctional and some in their dysfunctionality and somehow there's this kind of longevity which occurs even though to everybody else it's like very, very dysfunctional relationship you know somebody sacrificing more than they should but somehow it works and and that's fine and then for a lot of us we put in this commitment into the relationship and then a few years down the line however long down the line um, it implodes on itself and there's a breakup there's heartbreak there's pain um, maybe there's even a uh, betrayal in there and all of this occurs and that's at the point where a lot of us then decide this is where I'm going to be on my own and find out who I am before I get into another relationship. Or this is the point where I am going to sort my stuff myself out, sort out all of my stuff before I go into a new relationship, which is uh, in and of itself a fantastic idea, but there are ways to do this. And ideally most of us want to be in a relationship where we are able to, where we uh, avoid dysfunction. And if there is dysfunction, we're able to work through it. 
and we are able to differentiate ourselves as individuals within the relationship and be part of a whole as well and something greater than the individual self. That's what most people aim for. Anybody who's been betrayed generally ends up wanting to be in a relationship where they can trust again and have faith in their partner. And anybody who's been uh, abused, manipulated or controlled in some way obviously wants the opposite of that. So most of us end up wanting some kind of la loving, balanced, harmonious relationship. And a lot of us think or understand that the concept of being by oneself is enough to then move into the next relationship after a certain amount of time. And this is actually not really the case. The true case is to work on yourself. This is where the key is. But the work itself is, is not always enough. You need the experience. So let's boil this back down. Well, again, a lot of people come to me and they say, uh, I did all this work on myself. Uh, you know, I had all this, I had this betrayal, I had this heartbreak, and I've done all this work on myself. I've been alone for two years, three years, four years, five, however long. And I've met this person, and I really, really like this person, and I'm in this relationship, and now I'm triggered. And now I don't trust them. Now I'm wanting to check their phone. Now I'm doing this. Now I'm shouting at them. Now this old, you know, this old kind of side of me is coming forward, and I really don't like it. And I don't know what's going on because I did all this work. And the answer is simple. You can do the work, but you need the environment to test it. You need the environment to reinforce it. You need that bounce back. You need that experience. Think of it in terms of a developing child. Any, any type of nurturing is done in a safe environment. So if you take a child, let's say in an ideal kind of parental child relationship, the parent helps and the environment around the child helps or the parent first. Parent helps the child uh, develop their sense of self, their sense of self-worth, their um, and nurture that kind of self-esteem and that resilience and that ability to overcome issues um, and the ability to self-soothe in a healthy way. And then the child is allowed, is kind of given the opportunity to go into the world, go into the environment and test that and explore the world and then come back. This is the idea of a safe base within attachment theory and then come back to a kind of recharge. So it's safety experiment and the world can be a quite a harsh, hostile place. So you can leave the safety of the nurturing of the nursery, if you like, and enter into the world quite fragile and vulnerable and the world can very very quickly eat you effectively or or really really try and do it'll really do some damage now if the nurturing has been done well enough something will push through something will kick through so you might get a few knocks but you'll keep pushing and your self-esteem will stay there if you lose that kind of safe base and you get enough knocks from the outside you will begin to crumble your 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 kind of resilience begins to wear down um, etc etc but the ideal is here's the nursery here's the nurturing environment you go out into the world bit by bit and gradually you get a few knocks but you build your strength you know strength in the face of adversity adverse conditions build more strength and test you etc etc the same can be said within the therapy room so within the therapy room it's the same thing often people come to the therapy room quite damaged quite vulnerable, quite traumatized, you work through all of that, you begin to build up strength, you begin to work towards self-actualization, all of these kind of things, all these wonderful concepts, build all of that up, but they have to go out into the world, they have to go back into the environment, and the environment's not often very forgiving and not often very nurturing. It can be if you select the right environment. So, and it's the same with relationships. So you do this kind of like, you come out of that negative relationship, you have some downtime, you have some alone time, you spend your time nurturing yourself, finding out who you are, learning what your triggers are, you delve into your shadow side and what projections you have and what inner demons you might have and how your anger affects relationships and how your preconceived ideas affect stuff and you work on your forgiveness and you work on your anger and you work on all of this stuff. And you should, and it, well, I don't like the word should, but you know, it's a good idea to do that. It's good for yourself to do that. But then when you enter into a relationship, 
that's when that's like the last part of the journey that's the last bit of the work and if you've been wise enough to select a partner who can support you if you've really worked on your stuff you can select a partner who can communicate who can work with you you can when these things come up when the inevitable if you've been betrayed it's inevitable at some point when you're in a relationship in a new relationship and you're feeling vulnerable and you fear betrayal, that at some point you will want to check a phone, at some point you will wonder where they are, who they're talking to, what's going on. You might spin out in some kind of like anxiety attack, panic attack, whatever it may be. You might start throwing accusations around a place, losing your temper, packing your bags to leave. Whatever the trigger is, it will trigger behaviors that will seem in the cold light of day as um, over exaggerated, as inflated, as an overreaction. Now, this isn't someone telling you this is an overreaction either. Don't go down those roads. But if you think it to yourself, yeah, that I, I really went over the top there, and the feelings were massive and overwhelming, that's the indication, that's the clue, that's the, that's the sign that that's something that you need to work on within yourself and one way to do that first of all is to check reality so what's the reality of this situation is it as i believe it to be is it as i think it it is or have i distorted reality had i don't know they just haven't read my message it can be that simple um, because their phone is dead or they're at work or they're busy um, or is it that they're always out all the time and they never come home and they don't like you know you need to check the reality out in terms of what you're experiencing and is your reaction or your belief on what reality is your perception of reality does it match does it almost overlap with what reality is or is it very very far apart from it in which case you're making stuff up in your head that's the bottom line you're making scenarios up in, up in your head which don't fit because you're being triggered. That's then, as I said, that's where the work is. And these things happen in, these, in this new relationship, even if you think you've worked on stuff. Now, the mark of working on stuff is how quickly you can kind of go, well, hang on a minute, what, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Um, it's how quickly you can pull yourself in as to how effective the work has been that you've done on yourself. And then, obviously, if you've chosen wisely, you will have a partner who's also done some work on themselves, and both of you will somehow be able to muddle, not perfectly, don't expect perfection, will be able to muddle through somehow and support each other in the best way possible, not rescue each other, not become codependent, but somehow, and not also equally, don't be dismissive. Well, that's your shit, you deal with it. No, it's actually, it's a relationship. There's a trigger there. So it needs working on from, from both ways and it needs support and understanding. But again, not to the point of completely mollycoddling the other person because that doesn't help either. What are some things you can do to prepare yourself for this? Well, that's then when you do the stuff by yourself. Go and enjoy yourself, go and enjoy your life. Find out who you are, find out what your boundaries are, find out where you don't want to, where the transgressions have to stop. Find out all of that stuff. Learn to forgive. A Buddhist friend of mine told me once that you've, you've kind of reached this kind of level of forgiveness if you imagine yourself, I can't remember the exact story, but if you imagine yourself sitting on, a, on your mat in a forest with tea and food and the person that you dislike the most, hate the most, you are able to have them sit on your mat and you are able to share your, your tea and your cake with them. If you have to have them far away, you still have things to work on within that. And, and I think there's something in that as well. And as well with ourselves, if we work on when we're by ourselves, if we work on who we are, our past transgression, um, our past traumas, and how, and register how they're affecting us now, how they color the world around us for us, how we walk into things with this preordained ideas with this preconception of what it will be are we hearing things the way they are being said or are we putting the negative spin onto it the critical spin onto it you know all of these things 
you need to work on. And you can do that through journaling, exploring the shadow self, um, exploring your previous relationship, exploring your relationship with your parents or, or loved ones, and also in real time within the relationship that you're experiencing these new triggers in and going, what the hell? Why are these here? Um, I did all this work, I don't want this again. Just trust that it is part of the process. It is that stepping out into the world after having nurtured yourself. You've nurtured yourself and now you need to take that new self into the world. And that's where it's going to get tested. That's where it's going to get triggered. And that's where it needs even more nurturing and even more self-care and even more understanding and empathy. And hopefully from your new partner, you will get that as well and be able to work through various triggers and you'll be able to give it to them if they become triggered as well. I hope that helps. It's a very, very complex um, concept. It's a very, very complex thing and it's very subjective and individual, but there's uh, hopefully there's some, uh, there's a, uh, um, so there's some gems in there and there's a few kind of, there's a framework for you to work from. Until I see you next time, um, please take care of yourselves. Adios.